Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. A vlog is required because I'm leaving. I've got one and a half million subscribers and I've quit. I'm done. I've got nothing else to do here on YouTube. Seriously, though, thanks for the one and a half million subscribers. That's very much appreciated. I'm not the kind of person that does special events for that, mostly because it sneaks up on me. And also because those videos take so much time that I say to myself, hang on a minute, hang on, hang on. I could have just done six other videos in, in the time it took me to put something together or whatever. Some people like to mark the milestones. I personally don't really much care for it. It's a nice opportunity to thank the subscribers for sticking around, but that's really about as far as it goes. It can be something of a circle jerk. Excessive self-aggrandizement. Let's be honest, like I need an excuse to self-aggrandize. Good lord. No, not at all. But yeah, thanks a lot for that. So, I'm leaving. I am getting on a boat, and I'm gonna go sail away. And I'll be back, don't worry, I'm not going for that long. It's something we've been looking forward to for about a year here. A cruise called 70,000 Tons of Metal, which is 40 metal bands, 5 days, and we're heading on over to Mexico, and then I believe back over the course of 5 days. It should be interesting because I've never been on a cruise before, and this is probably the only kind of cruise where I'd enjoy myself. We've been looking forward to this for about a year, so I'm leaving to do that. What I will say is that I have managed to make some videos, not a huge number, but some videos to kind of cover it while I'm gone. You can expect a couple of Hearthstone videos, the Blood Bowl video, there should be a couple of WTF is there for you as well, just to tide you over. Ah, you see what I did there? Uh, yeah. But I expect to be back to work on Saturday once I've got back from Miami. Not looking forward to the plane flight there, but apparently it doesn't take too long, so, yeah. It's better than the five-hour flight over to LA that I have to make every once in a while. I bloody hate planes. Maybe I'll come off this boat saying I bloody hate boats more. Who knows? It might happen. So, I have something positive to share with you that doesn't involve me going on a boat. It involves certain people on another continent getting access to a clean water supply. This is a charity we've been supporting for a number of years, goes by the name of Charity Water. And it can take about two years for their projects to actually come to fruition. It takes a long time to get that stuff out there. Well, as it turns out, our first project, in which we raised over $20,000, has been completed. And I've got some photos here for you from the various places. I've also got a link to all of the GPS locations of the various different water projects, and we rehabilitated several wells, as well as contributed to a few larger digging projects nearby a chief's house, as well as a school. Now, this is not the really big fundraiser where we raised over $50,000 and donated a bunch of money from our King of the Web contest. That is coming a little bit later. This is the first fundraiser which we did, I think, around Christmas 2011. So, these are some awesome photos. It's absolutely fantastic that we were able to make that happen, and hopefully we'll be able to do so again later. So thank you to everybody for assisting with this, and those who donated. You have actually made a difference in something real, which is really cool, and it's not often, I think, that people necessarily get to say that. So, let's talk about channel-specific stuff. Firstly, transparency when it comes to taking deals. I think that... A lot of channels do this right, and I like to think that this is one of them, that we're very honest and open about when we take some kind of brand deal. And the recent Machinima blow-up was certainly worth looking at for anybody even considering taking a deal of any description, regardless of how upfront and honest and straightforward or backroom and shady it might be. I've gone back through my videos and looked at the videos that were out previous to the FTC guidelines being released that said, you know, this is how you should disclose. And I've actually added those disclosures in for videos before that. Now, I don't actually have to do that as far as I'm aware, but I've done it anyway. This should allow you to find out which of the videos that I did were paid for promotions and which weren't. Now, you're not going to be too surprised, I think, by them. They are fairly obvious, especially since we went out of our way at the time to tell you. But some of the really early ones, perhaps not so much. So I've done something about that. Make sure that you can tell exactly what's going on. In future, the deals I'll be taking will probably be the same as previously. We're going to be taking deals whereby I get to compete in some kind of sort of internet celebrity tournament or show match. I like those ones. I think it's okay to take that because I'm basically being paid for the size of my audience and my kind of e-celebrity, whatever the hell that means, and not for any kind of opinion, which is good. I don't take any deals which require me to give opinions. I'm not a fan of that. And I won't be taking any in the future either. It doesn't seem like the right way of doing things. 
And maybe if I get a good movie deal, I might take that as well. You know, the Pacific Rim thing was very hard to pass up, and early on in my career, I took one for Limitless, which I certainly don't regret. That was fairly lucrative and pretty creative as well. It involved creating a parody commercial for Limitless, which I enjoyed quite a lot. So I take deals like that, but that's kind of the limit of it. And I'm also going to try and enhance the transparency on this channel by telling you whether or not the copy of the game that we're using to provide the critique was given to us as a review copy for free. It's weird, I was looking through the guidelines and it seems like that's required. It's a bit strange considering that review copies are very much par the course for this particular industry, but I don't really see the harm in disclosing whether or not I bought the game or was given it as a review copy. I think for people that don't do reviews or first impressions or critiques or don't just get free games on a regular basis, the idea of getting games for free is amazing, you know, absolutely incredible. For me, we get about 20 times as many games as I could possibly ever do videos on, so we're drowning in them pretty much 100% of the time, and getting games is par the course, it's like buying tools for your job. So for me, getting a free game is not going to get anyone a good impression, that's not how it works. Should I remind people, of course, that the copy of Gary's Incident that I used was a review copy? Yeah. Yeah. Regardless, I want to try and comply with these guidelines and be as transparent as possible for people. I don't think it's useful information, but I'm going to put it out there anyway, so you can expect to see that on future videos. Now, channel content-wise. So, you probably noticed quite a bit of Hearthstone, but a lot of WTF is. I'm focusing on WTF is right now because, of course, it's our most popular format. I think it's the most viable format that this channel has. It's one that really never runs out of steam, and it's also very useful to people. So we're doing a lot of that, and we're going to keep doing a lot of that. We've been doing research streams to support some of this, which is a cool way of sharing the process of coming to the conclusion with an audience, as well as get a little bit of help from people in the chat. If it gets stuck on a puzzle, or if there's something I don't notice, it's good for someone in the chat to actually be able to point that out. That means that we get more accurate assessments of games on this channel. That's a good thing for everybody. Absolutely everybody. It's also been an excuse for me to get the missus involved in stuff that is two-player in particular. She was involved in the research for Nidhogg as well as Samurai Gun and a few other things. So that's very valuable. But that seems to be going down pretty well. Views are good for WTF is across the board. Hard to really complain. Although I did make the mistake of releasing two in one day and that really hurt the second one. I brought out Metal Gear Rising and then I brought out Wooden Sensei on the same day. Wooden Sensei got punished for that pretty hard. Admittedly, that is a game that is a few months old. So there was less interest in it. Every time I release a Twitchy is, I try and focus on stuff that's kind of on the front page of Steam, because that's simply the way that searching for critique and assessment on YouTube actually works, yeah? There's a spike of interest when it's on the front page of Steam, and then it drops off. So no one was actually looking for Wooden Sensei, you know? But they are looking for stuff like Assassin's Creed Liberation, they're looking for Nidhogg, Banner Saga, and so on and so forth. And the closer I can get the video to the release, the better. Ideally, I get it out on the day of release or even before that because the developer sent me an early copy. And that's eventually where I want to be with all of my games. But that doesn't happen right now. And we're still in the process of trying to get big publishers to play ball with us in the same way that they play ball with organizations like IGN. Takes a bit of work to get to that point. We've been working on it for years, we're still getting there. And eventually, the hope is that we get early copies of everything, and you get the assessment on the embargo date, and not like a week afterwards, when I've got a hold of the game and I've actually had time to have a look at it. So we'll see where that goes. But yeah, WTF seems to be trucking along quite nicely. Hearthstone is as well. It's ridiculously popular, it continues to be ridiculously popular. I'm shocked by the number of views it gets consistently. It's an incredibly popular series that I do. And it's kind of become the bread and butter of this channel, in a way, in the sense that it's something I can produce at almost any time. If I run into a problem with the game that I'm trying to critique, oh, I can just make a Hearthstone video. I don't want to become dependent on it though, because it is very easy content, don't get me wrong. Sitting down and playing that game, I like to think I know a decent amount about it, and I'm a bit above average. I'm not a great player, but I'm above average. So I can put on entertaining stuff. Obviously, I'm investing in-game and real currency and providing those videos. And that does seem to be going down well with people. However, we don't want to have too much of it. I'm looking to maybe have three to four episodes of that a week at most. Don't want to really overdo it. I could do one episode every day, but... It seems like I would oversaturate the channel. That seems needless. For those who say, oh, well, it's a Let's Play, and you said you don't do Let's Plays, but this is a Let's Play, blah, 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 blah. I keep having to explain the differentiation, but for some reason, that never seems to go in. I don't know why that is. 
I don't like single-player Let's Plays unless they're very well done, yeah? And the reason for that is that the Let's Player is almost a parasite on top of someone else's really hard work. Yeah, they're not the one making the story, unless, of course, it's a game like, say, Minecraft, something that's very focused on personal creativity and doesn't really have a lot of scripted events. If you do something like Bioshock or maybe The Walking Dead, anything like that, it's the voice actors and the script writers and all the guys that made this great game possible. They're the guys that should be front and center. And I personally just don't want to be that guy who's sitting there and talking over that. I can do a critique and assessment, but I wouldn't want to do a full playthrough. For multiplayer, I like the fact that the story is in your hands. You are the guy driving the story. You're the one putting the effort in. My arena runs are dependent on two things. My gameplay, my opponent's gameplay. Nobody else. We're the ones doing the work. And that's the difference between the two things. That's why I believe you cannot let's play a competitive multiplayer game. Everything else is just a commentary as opposed to a let's play. You might think it's a pointless differentiation. You might dislike the fact that I decide to arbitrarily decide what is and isn't okay for my channel. But welcome to reality. It's my channel. Those are the reasons that I don't do single player let's plays and why I don't have any intention to do so. But yeah, Hearthstone's here to stay, folks. Even though it's open beta, people are still watching the episodes in droves. I will continue to make them, and I will bring you a few more episodes of Lord of the Legendaries as well. Gonna bring that back. That was quite popular. Maybe it hasn't run its course. Maybe we can do a few more episodes of that. Where is Content Patch, you might ask? Took a bit of a hiatus. I technically did one last week called Under the Influence, Microsoft paying for positivity on YouTube. That, in fact, was supposed to be a content patch, but Chris, the guy that does the editing on the content patch and all the graphics and things like that, he was in the sky at the time. So, yeah, that wasn't going to happen. But there will be more content patches. I said I wanted to focus on the idea of doing content patch only for really big news. But as it turns out, that's a terrible plan, because there's not that much really big news going on. It was entirely possible around the time when all of the next-gen consoles were being announced and things like that, but that is not the case anymore. So, alright, we'll go back to not five days a week, because there's evidently not enough good news to justify that, but we'll at least get a few episodes out of that thing every week. So, if you've been missing the content patch, don't worry, it will be making its return. The question, I suppose, is, and I keep hearing this a lot, should I go back to doing Why Do I Own? For those who don't know, that was a fairly short-lived series where I dig through my Steam back catalog and find some really obscure stuff that nobody really knows about, and I actually take a look at it and figure out why exactly it is that I actually own this thing in the first place. And it was mostly a very, very critical look at those titles, like Bad Rats, you know? I absolutely hate that game, it's a joke. Pound of Ground was terrible as well. And a lot of people reacted badly to that. Particularly Pound of Ground, they actually said, you know, you're just ragging on this game for no reason. Apparently, people really hate nitpicking. <laughs> they really don't like that. And I actually stopped the series as a result of those comments. Cause like, oh, alright, well, I guess you don't like that. I think I could maybe do it better though. I think perhaps I was riffing on that game for cheap entertainment even though I didn't really mean to, but that's what ended up actually happening. And I could have said things that were a little bit more meaningful instead of just mocking the voice acting or whatever. I could probably put some more in-depth editing into it as well, so I might bring it back, but I'd have to change the format around a little bit. I still have some ridiculous games in my Steam library. For those wondering, currently I own 878 Steam games, and I've played only about half of them. So there are many, many games that I'm curious about that I would like to dive into and just have a look at. Some ridiculous obscurity to see maybe whether or not I actually missed the gem there, but I have a feeling that to find that gem I'm going to have to have a mountaineering expedition through the hills and valleys of totally awful. But I might bring it back. We'll see. And as for Alpha Strike, you know what? I can't be asked. I want to be entirely frank here. The nonsense that I have seen with early access games is blowing my mind at the moment. Right now, there's a huge cheating scandal surrounding Rust. Everything's blowing up about that. There's games like Towns, which haven't received a single worthwhile update since April of 2013. An early access title turned into full release that ended up being a bloody waste of time. I am absolutely sick of it. You know, I looked at enough early stuff as it was before the early access program, as someone that looked at early versions of games because it was my job to, I am 
actually floored by the early access program and just the amount of nonsense that is surrounding it at the moment. And I just don't want to cover it. And even if I could, I don't know how. I've mentioned this several times before. What use is it to create a video about an early access game that could have completely changed the next week? What's the point? There isn't one. Right now, it seems highly likely that I'm just going to abandon looking at early access games completely and just give them no place on this channel. I don't think that personally I should be encouraging people to buy into early access. I really don't think it should be commonplace. The fact that there are two early access games at the top of Steam sellers right now and they've been there for the last couple of weeks worries the hell out of me. Oh, you could buy finished games that we know are actually good or not good. Not invest in something like, say, Rust or Daisy, which is plagued by God knows what. But hey, these are genres that people really want right now, and they're willing to buy into them regardless of what state the game's actually in. I don't want to encourage that, and I don't see the point in assessing it, because it isn't done, and my assessment would become out of date really quick. There are a lot of new games coming out. Lots of them. More than I could ever cover. Why would I cover early access? I don't think there's a reason to, so... At least for the foreseeable future, I'm going to be ignoring early access games entirely on this channel. I'm not going to go anywhere near them. I'm going to wait for the games to actually come out, and then I can make a proper assessment of them. If early access becomes an epidemic on PC, then I'm probably shooting myself in the foot there, because by the time I'm ready to assess the game, people have moved on to a different game, because they got sick of rust in 0.07 alpha or whatever. But I think from a coverage standpoint, it is just impossible to deliver worthwhile, proper content about an early access game if you don't make regular videos about that same title. And I've got hundreds of games I'm supposed to cover on a monthly basis. I can't focus on one like that. That's just insanity. Alright folks, I think that wraps me up honestly, that's all I need to say for the time being. Once again, thank you very much for one and a half million subscribers, that's just insane. I never dreamed of getting that much of a following. It's fantastic that we've got to that point in things. Keep on trucking in the right direction. So thank you very much for your support once again folks. I'm gonna go on a boat now, if you don't mind. And I'll be back by the 1st of February. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.